Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Steven Universe Retrospectives. And today, we're going to be discussing episodes 153 and 154 of Steven Universe slash the final episodes of the original series, Escapism and Change Your Mind. And much like with episodes prior to this one, these the, one of these episodes actually once again exceeds the 11 minute mark. And in this case, Change Your Mind is actually a full 43 minutes. So... Like with uh, So like with all the other episodes that usually exceed the 11 minute mark, I'm going to be separating this video into two sections, one talking about escapism, the other talking about change your mind. Though I though I suspect when I, when I talk about change your mind, it'll be much longer than the other episodes that have usually exceeded the 11 minute mark, as those ones are at least 22 to 23 minutes, which with commercials we would probably put in the, in a half, the half hour range of most cartoons. This one would go into a full hour, so this one's so change your mind's already going to be much longer than your standard Steven Universe episode. But is it going to be a good one? Is it going to be a proper finale? Well, let's find out. And of course, before but of course, before we talk about that, we got to talk about escapism too. So to recap, Stephen, 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 Connie, Stephen, Connie, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl wound up, wound up accompanying Blue and Yellow Diamond to the Gem Homeworld, mostly because they wanted to talk to White Diamond, as it was revealed that the power of the diamonds could restore corrupted gems, but sadly they didn't have the power to make it stick, as when they tested it out on Centipedal, reverting her back to her true form of Nephrite, she immediately reverted back into Centipedal upon Stephen and the other diamonds letting go. As such... As such, Steven wants to make a case with White Diamond, but sadly, upon arriving on the Gem Homeworld, White Diamond is not making any time, does not really making any time for Steven. And when Steven tries to talk to Yellow and Blue about this, even he's only able to get a, a few words with both of them before they're called away to perform their duties. As such, Steven, in an attempt to talk to all three diamonds in one place, decides to host a ball on decides to host a ball on the, uh, decides to host a ball on the Gem Homeworld, which at first seems to be going well. Until White Diamond becomes a no-show, sending her Pearl in her place. As such, Steven, kind of feeling disappointed and needing a pick-me-up, ends up dancing with Connie. Ends up dancing with Connie, and in the midst of their dance, they end up fusing into Stevani. Something that ends up, that is a big no-no on in the Gem Home Gem Homeworld, and everyone tells Stevani to unfuse immediately, but they don't. But they don't. And when other, and when other gem and when Garnet and when Garnet Pearl and Ameth Pearl Amethyst and two unnamed gems try and step to their aid with Gar. With, with Pearl and Amethyst fusing into Opal and the two unnamed gems fu fusing into another fusion whose name I have no I don't know they end up all getting zapped by white by yellow diamond and yellow diamond to, pu to punish Shivani ends up throwing them into a tower and essentially puts them on timeout which is where escapism begins as we see Shivani trying to break out of their prison and failing spectacularly whatever material this to the prison is made out of it's resistant to the it's resistant to their shields and sadly the only the only other opening in the prison is as a single window one that would not exactly be viable to jump out of and is too and is so narrow that nobody could fit right could fit through it so yeah stevani's kind of shit out of luck and after the and after they check out the window they end up falling back to the floor of the prison and they unfuse back into steven and connie and both kind of realize they're kind of stuck here for now. Thankfully, Connie does have some food in the form of candy bars, which she shares with Steven. But ultimately, they realize they kind of are they're kind of shit out of luck because everything has just gone belly up in a matter of well, in a matter of minutes, so, so to speak. As the part as the as the ball was a bust, Steven Steven has now completely embarrassed himself in front of the diamonds to the point where they're now ang they're now angry with him. And his friends have now been poofed. Everything has just gone wrong, and Steven has no idea what to do. As such, Connie tries to stay on the up and up, and tries to think and tries to th thinking of ways that they could potentially escape. Even bringing out her phone, but of course, since they're on a different world, on a different planet, she has no signal. As such, they continue con they continue contemplating means of escape, but. When Co as Connie talks about calling for help, Stephen finds himself nodding off a little. And as Connie is talking, she asks when her, uh, she ta she talks about how long they're going to be there, maybe a hundred years. But as Stephen's nodding off, something he's hit with inspiration, and he says, "That's it," which leads to a kind of funny line where he's, where Connie thinks he's responding to the hundred years line. But no, but no. So what Stephen actually means is that he can call for help. He basically, utilizing the psychic projection power that he utilized on Earth when Yellow Diamond knocked him out, Stephen thinks that he can head back to Earth and essentially call for help, as there is still one crystal gem that hasn't been poofed. Bismuth. Basically, if he can send a message out to her and let her know where or shit things are going wrong and we need your help, then she'll be able to come and give aid. As a 
As such, Connie does think this is a good idea, and so, you, and so with her lap acting as a pillow, which I find adorable, Stephen is able to go to sleep and then ends up sending out his astral projection to Earth. Unfortunately, though, things go wrong. As when his astral projection arrives on Earth, it ends up inhabiting the body of a watermelon Stephen. Much so, yeah, that's kind of a flaw in the plan. And from there... I think I can just easily summarize everything in a few simple sentences. Shenanigans ensue. Basically, Steven is stuck on Mask Island and he tries to find a way off. He can't swim off because the currents are too strong and he's, and he's just a watermelon, even a bipedal one. And on top of that, he has tr he's having trouble building a boat. On top of that... <coughs> On top of that, apparently the island's kind of been sp the island society has been split in two. As one set of watermelons want to continue following the example that the baby watermelon Stephen set when set in their very first episode, while the other ones are now following what Stephen did when he encouraged the watermelons to you know go out go out and help and help Alexandrite fight off against Malik fight against Malachite. And so basically, one's a pacifist. Where one side's completely pacifist, one side is essentially a warrior clan. And Steven is sadly caught in the middle. Well, however, Steven ain't got time for any of that shit. As well, both sides try and pull him into their affairs. He just says no and just goes back and keeps trying to build his raft. Eventually, both sides do take notice of what he's doing. And what I kind of find interesting is that whether intentionally or not, Steven is still getting the watermelons to do what he wants. Like, for... Like, for... Like, uh... Like, the fact that they're still following the baby watermelon's example shows that they did take what Steven said to heart in the fir in their first episode. And then likewise, the fact that they're still worshipping what St the example Steven set when he encouraged them to fight up, fight back against Malachite. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. And it's ultimately through Steven ta ask it's ultimately through Steven's efforts and, well, failing, that the other, that the watermelons just kind of drop any conflicts they have and decide to help him, which I kind of find amusing as it sh showcases that Ste regardless of whether Steven's consciously aware of it or not, he still is controlling these things. So I dig that. But either way, with the aid of the watermelons, he's able to build a raft and he's able to leave Mask Island. Though sadly, he encounters a bit of turbulence as the, as as he tries as he goes further out into the ocean, he ends up encountering essentially a watermelon shark. I'll let that sink for I'll let that sink in. But basically, but after he manages to pacify it, Stephen manages to to use what's left of the raft to try and paddle the rest of the way there. But sadly, his watermelon body is breaking down. My guess is that it's too much ocean water being absorbed in, and so it looks like he's not going to make it to the to the to the beach. And, however. Thankfully, Lion finds Stephen, and he's a and it's a and Lion's able to tell this watermelon Stephen host the mind of his of his of his master, and so Lion decides to give Stephen a lift, which also leads to this, which also leads to the to, uh, to the song of the same name as the episode, Escapism, which is a very pretty song about talking about how about being trapped in an awful place and how they ra and how they and how the singer would rather be free. It's a good song. I recommend it if you want to find it. But either way, but either way, Lion manages to get Stephen back to shore where he's able to meet back up with Greg and Bismuth. And what I, again, what I love is that Greg is able to, is that Greg easily figures out that the watermelon is Stephen as well. And so they as such when as much when Bismuth is brought into the fray, Stephen does manage to tell everyone we need backup. Well, now with some difficulties first, is at first he tries miming it and failing, and then he tries drawing a picture in the sand, and that doesn't do it. So he finally just spells it out and says, it's like we it's like we need when just says we need backup, which finally does say which finally gets him a thumbs up from Bismuth. And so with his mission accomplished, Steven finally just lets go as the watermelon body essentially passes on. With Steven waking back up in the cell, with with Connie now asleep, and him realizing now they just gotta wait, so. Okay, yeah, that was escapism. Again, this is a very simple episode, to be honest. And in the purest sense of the word, it's filler. It's just like pure filler. The biggest plot point that escapism gives us is that Steven is able to send a message back to Bismuth on Earth, letting him know that he and the Crystal Gems need her help. Which is a bit which is an important plot point as ultimately Steven does need the help but in the grand scheme of what's going on in the current story arc that's real this entire episode is just small potatoes it feels like it's just here to essentially waste time like they could really have just condensed this episode down into one scene in the next episode just basically showing Steven sending out his mind to earth and making contact with Bismuth we didn't really need to check back in with the watermelon Stevens especially since their conflict really did not matter in the grand scheme of things that while well, the what they tried to bring Steven in on their whole civil war and whatever 
But Steven really could not give two shits. He's currently trapped on an alien planet with his best friend and his teammates, and he just wants and he just wants to get to someone that can that can help. He does not care what's going on with the watermelons to the point where to the point where even rather than trying to break the reunite to try and unite their tribe again, he's just like no, not doing this, and just walks away at every opportunity. I like I kind of find that amusing, but the problem is that it really feels like it's just there to waste time. So I'm going to kind of call that a flaw. And that's kind of, and ultimately that's kind of the big, and ultimately that's kind of what the episode is. It's just here to waste time. It's just here to be a filler episode. It's not horrible filler. There is some entertainment value in seeing it all go through. And the song Escapism is a pretty song. It just feels like that this whole episode real is that we didn't it didn't it just doesn't feel like we needed a full episode just for this one little plot point. You could have just condensed that thing into what happens in the next episode, but the fact that they decided to just give it its uh, give it an entire episode of its own, it just feels like it just feels like it's there to waste time. And I don't like saying that because again, I don't hate the episode, but it uh, but it is noticeable. In that case, and as a result, I'm kind of, I would, I find escapism to kind of be the weakest of the filler episodes in Steven Universe, because at least other filler episodes expand on a, expand on someone's character, allow us to check in on somebody else and see more, and see more development on their part, especially with the denizens of Beach City. Here, it's really, from here, here, escapism is really just there to pad out the, to pad out the length of the series, and as a result, it just feels. Eh, not awful, but eh. So, yeah, that's so. Yeah, that's that. That's really all I can say about escapism. It's filler, and probably the weakest filler in the series. So, <clears throat> but what isn't filler, and what is a bigger deal in the series, is the final episode, "Change Your Mind." And this episode opens with Stephen apparently having been con apparently having conked out again in his cell, and then waking back up in it. Only for whatever reason, it looks a little different. The cell, rather than being the drab gray that it was when Steven and Connie were there, now seems to have a pink highlight. And Connie seems to have gone missing. Which confuses, which does concern Steven a little, until he hears the doors to, it, to the cell open, and in walks in Blue Diamond, who immediately starts chewing Steven out. Of course, um, Steven's first concern is wondering where the hell Connie is, and so he asks, what did you do with Connie? But Blue says, what did I do? What did you do? And she begins talk, be ber berating Pink about how, about how, how she apparently, apparently she, how she, how her organic pets are now roaming around the palace, and all the pearls are trying to go around, are now wasting all their time trying to get them. They have no idea, and they have no idea where any of them are. At which point, this uh, this honestly cute, multicolored, I want to say it looks like a caterpillar, pops out of Blue Diamond's hair, which causes it to freak out, at which point she throws it to Steven, who, just, who, who with incident, incidents in Steven's arms, it just gives him a hug. It's adorable. I can, I can kind of see what... Which, yeah, if you can't tell by now, this is a memory. This is a memory that Steven is dreaming, and I can kind of see why Pink Time would want to keep these little buggers. They're adorable. However, Blue is... Blue is just chew Blue is just chewing Pink out in the dream about how she should how about how what she did was unbecoming how she shouldn't have done it how she ha how she how this is just how this is just embarrassing yada 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 basically she's just making Pink feel like shit and uh, and as the dream goes along Steven's form completely changes to that of Pink Diamond and after Diamond finishes chewing Steven out he just says I know I messed up I'm sorry at which point as Steven cries a little. He, he manages, he, re, he realizes, hey, I'm Pink Diamond now, at which point the whole dream falls apart again, much like when Steven had the dream where he was messing around with Pink Pearl, as it continues devolving, and his image starts shifting between that of himself, Rose, and Pink Diamond, and it's rather horrifying. Essentially, it's an identity crisis in the worst way possible, as Steven is trying to come to terms with who he is, what's going on, but as it continues on, but as it goes on... We see a brief flash of White Diamond's eyes before Steven wakes up proper back in the cell, with Connie with Connie still there. As such, Steven tries reorienting himself, but he doesn't get but he doesn't get managed to get out that that long of a chance before Blue Diamond Man actually comes into the cell, cell for real, even quoting verbatim the exact same thing she said in the dream. Like, do you realize what you did, Pink? As uh, in this case, she in this case she ch she chastises Steven and Connie for fusing in the court like that, 
And basically, while Connie is trying to jump to Steven's defense, Blue just disregards it immediately because what because what would what would Connie know about the affairs of Diamond? She's just a human. She doesn't have any she doesn't have anything to concern herself with that. But the point is that the sorry, dry throat. I'm getting some water. Ah, good shit. But my point is this: basically. Basically, Connie starts telling Blue that they need to be let out right now. After all, they're, they're, she and Steven are human and they need food. And on top of that, top of that, she kind of throws Blue's thing of I don't understand your affairs in her face by saying, what, you don't think I've been grounded before? But again, Blue is not listening. She still is angry at Steven for fusing with Connie like that. And again, fusion between two different types of gems is a big no-no. More especially so for Steven because, again, human fusions are... Something that should not be possible. But the point is this. Point is this. Blue tells Steven that if he wants to get out of the room, he needs to apologize for what he did. And Steven just says, no. Which shocks Blue, but yeah, Steven keeps saying, no. I'm not gonna I'm not going to apologize. St fusion is fun. I fusion isn't a bad thing. I do it all the time. It's fun. I it's fun. We fun. Me and the Crystal Gems do it all the time. At which point, Blue in, it, Blue in response to this starts using her emotional powers and sends out another grief wave, which does cause Steven to briefly buckle over, but he kind of he, he kind of brushes it off. Yeah, he's still crying, but he's not sad. He's not unhappy. He's fine. And he continues throwing everything back in Blue's face about how this is just normal on Earth. This is what... On Earth, he was more... He was encouraged to be happy. He was encouraged to do what he wanted. He was encouraged to do things that, that he enjoyed just because he enjoyed doing them. And that... The Crystal Gems, they tr they loved him and cared about him. Then, that ultimately, for them, fusion is normal. All this is normal. And that punishment like this was not normal. This is... They, the Crystal Gems never did something like this to Steven. They never tried to throw him around like this. They never tried pushing him around like this. And basically, Blue is just getting so fed up with this that she actually does... That she actually just straight up attacks Steven. And she hits him with an energy ball that doesn't hurt him, but it does bring the waterworks on even further. Which, again, when Steven... Re when, which, again, it does cause Steven to briefly keel over, but he recovers rather quickly, aside from the tears. And as Steven wipes his tears away, he kind of asks a qu he quickly realizes something. He says, this isn't normal. This isn't right. And then he asks Blue Diamond an armor-piercing question. How many times did you lock Pink up in here? How many times did you make her cry? And that kind of hits close to home for Blue Diamond. As she try as she tries defending her actions, as she tries to as she tries to defend all the times that she's essentially emotionally abused Pink and emotionally manipulated her into into agreeing to apologize for things that she's done, agreeing to do things that she was not supposed to do, yada yada yada. And as Blue try and as Blue starts stutter <clears throat> starts stuttering and failing to come up with an excuse, she realizes something. She's been kind of a dick. And she quickly starts to put two and two together and realizes why Pink probably left Homeworld in the first place. She quickly, as she realizes that right now, she's doing it all over again. She's abusing Pink. And, and when she realizes that everything she's doing is only hurting Pink in the long run, she starts realizing maybe what you did was for the best. Because if you were happier on Earth than you were here, then maybe it, then maybe it was best that you did stay there. Maybe that maybe you didn't fail Homeworld. Maybe Homeworld failed you. As such, as such, with Blue with Blue coming to this revelation, she finally tells Steven she she's more willing to listen to Steven as he says that they need help getting out of there and they need and they need to get his friends. At which point, Blue decides to help Steven and Connie as she manages to sneak them out of the as she manages to sneak them out of the room by putting her in that little in her little hair care little hair noose, I think. I don't know what it is. Anyway, either way, she manages to sneak them out of there, and she brings them back to Pink Diamond's palace, and upon arriving, the first thing Steven and Connie do is just gorge themselves on food, because odds are they've been stuck in that prison for a while. But after they've had their fill, immediately the two of them suit up. Connie gets a... Connie gets into her regular clothes, her flight jacket, Steven ditches his Pink Diamond outfit as he gets into his trademark shirt, jeans, and sandals, at which point... 
And that's such as everything is set up, and they say their goodbye to the Pebbles, as Steven says that they have to go and rescue Steve, his friends. As such, Blue once again sneaks Steven and Connie out of there, as they manage to make their way to where the crystal gems are being kept. Basically, it's basically a gem storage chamber. So you know how the gems typically have a storage room for all of the corrupted gems that they've bubbled? Well, it turns out the gem homeworld has something too, albeit I'm assuming that the gems that are stored there are ones that have been disobedient, so to speak. Or our gem experiments, because when we've seen later, it looks like there are more forced fusions among the bubble gems. So, yeah, it's still not a pretty place. But thankfully, but thankfully, Blue Diamond is able to get in with, with minimal issues, since, you know, she's a diamond and the guards there do know her. But upon stepping inside, the lights in the room start turning on by themselves, and we soon see why. It turns out there is someone here who's been expecting them. Yellow Diamond, who is just sitting there in the middle of the room and immediately asks, what do, what does everyone think they're doing? At first, Steven thinks that the question is directed at him as he says he's here to get his friends, but then before Yellow directs her attention to Blue and asks, what do you think you're doing, Blue? Basi and basically, what Yellow is, well, basically, Yellow is just chewing Blue out for being lax on Pink, telling her that she has to put Pink back in the tower, but Blue is not budging, even stating that Pink prefers to be called Steven. At which point Yellow starts getting eh, at which point Yellow starts getting more and more angry because Steven broke a rule. Steven is is going against their is going against their ideals. He needs to be punished. He needs to learn his lesson. But Blue is not backing down, and she continues throwing in Yellow's face how what they were doing was hurting Pink Diamond in the long run. It for it caused her to go away to be pushed away from them. And I can't. At which point, and as such, it's just basically all clear that she's not backing down on this, and that she's not, and that basically she's real, and basically she's trying to convince Yellow they were the baddies. At which point, Yellow just finally puts her foot down and says, "It's like bl yeah, Blue, take her back to the tower." At which point, Blue says, "I won't." So Yellow says, "Fine, I'll do it myself." As she tries to make a grab at Stephen and Connie, before Blue just smacks her hand away. Which I love, just the m immediate shock on both Yellow and Blue Diamond's faces. But what I kind of love is that Blue Diamond realizes she's kind of shit out of luck here. She's just made the first move, so she kind of needs to go all in. At which point, she immediately attacks Yellow Diamond with one of her with one of her emo with one of her emotional energy blasts. Which, yeah, Yellow Diamond does not exactly like, as she immediately says, "You would use your powers on me." At which point, it leads to one of the most one of the first awesome moments in this episode. Blue Diamond versus Yellow Diamond, and it's fucking cool. Just to see these two diamonds duking it out there in the room, both of them using their both of them using their powers and full brute strength to try and grab it, to try and overpower one another. Yellow yelling at Blue's face about how about about all the times she's been there for Blue Diamond, about how she cared for her, and this is the thanks she gets and all that. It's really good stuff, and I and I dig it. But in the midst of the chaos, Steven and Connie run through the room and manage to get to the bubble containing the crystal gems. But upon immediately grabbing them, Yellow tries once again to make Yellow once again tries to grab at Steven and Connie, but he's able to throw up a bubble to stop her. But again, Blue tries throwing them off, and in the midst of the battle, both diamonds get flung out of the room, just immediately bursting through the wall and just falling until they land on what looks like a what looks like a long platform. With Steven and Connie again fall, falling with them before Steven's bubble is popped, and they're now see and they're now out in the open. As such, Blue Diamond once again tries to at which point, as everything is going wrong, Blue Diamond Blue Diamond is on the ground. She's clearly more weakened, and she, and basically Yellow continues chewing her out about how uh, about how the, about how what Blue's doing is wrong again. I don't remember exactly what she said. I really wish I did. But ultimately, Blue counters with counters with what how that, how Pink was suffering in silence for so long, how Blue was suffering in silence for so long, and now she knows that Yellow is suffering too. At which point, Yellow just kind of grits her teeth. And then starts blasting Blue with one of her energy rays, clearly intent on poofing her too. Which I'm guessing because Blue's a diamond, it takes more to do it. But ultimately, Yellow looks like it's hurting her just to do this at all. However, Steven, now having gotten his bearings back, immediately grabs, immediately throws his shield and manages to hit Yellow's arm, causing her to stop her attack before Blue Diamond gets poofed. At which point, Steven tells her that Steven tells Yellow that she can't that she can't do that. 
that she should that she can't do this, that she shouldn't do this, but she says yes, she should, that she has to do this for the sake of everyone, for the sake of their perfect empire, for the sake of everything. To which Stephen gives a second armor piercing question: Does this look perfect to you? At which point, yeah, Yellow kind of takes a moment and realizes, yeah, things don't look exactly good right now. Her sibling is on the ground in front of her. Her body literally smoking after that attack. There's j there's a there's a giant hole in the wall. Clear signs of a of a major fight. Yeah, this looks like this is more conflict than it. This doesn't look perfect. This looks like a war zone. At which point Steven start at which point Steven starts kind of talking Yellow Diamond down as he tells her as he says as he actually relays a phrase that we haven't heard since the second episode of the series. Well, if every pork chop were perfect, then we couldn't have hot dogs. Which, if, when when Stephen relays that phrase to Yellow, she's like, what? what's that mean? But Stephen kind of gives the ultimate essence of the phrase. That if we try cutting out everything about the soci about society that we think doesn't fit, then we lose everything about it that we like, that we enjoy. And that ultimately... And that ultimately... <coughs> Hold on a second. Sorry, I was having a coughing fit. But, yeah, basically, Stephen just... Stephen basically tells tells Yellow that it basically that essentially if you try cutting everything out of the society that you don't that you don't think fits, then you lose what makes it fun. Like hot dogs or as blue ads or pink. Which I'll get to my thoughts on that by at the end of the episode, but I like that it's the for it's what it's blue mentioning pink at all that does what that does that does the trick. As immediately after hearing that, white yellow diamond has a breakdown. As she just falls to her knees, and she just starts crying. Which, at first, she thinks that Blue Diamond is the one that did that, is the one doing this, but no. This is all yellow, so this is all yellow. But, so, yeah. Yellow starts, re yellow starts kind of letting it all out, so to speak, and Blue, she goes over and, uh, she goes over and starts comforting her sibling. As such, with the... As such, with that with that conflict now over, Stephen Stephen ends up popping the bubble containing the crystal gems, but which which he did which he actually did when they first landed. But so that I'm but I forgot to mention that. But either way, but the gems themselves have not come out yet. Even Amethyst, Stephen admits would have would have come out by now, but they don't seem to be. But they they still see their gems still seem to be docile. At which point, Yellow does tell Steven that her beams will keep them docile for a while. So it's going to take some time before they actually reform. So they're kind of stuck. However, however, with everything, however, with the, with the immediate, with Steven no longer be in danger going back to his tower, it's now made clear that he's, it's now made clear that he needs to GTFO off of Homeworld. Especially since if White Diamond catches wind of what the heck happened here, she's going to be pissed and she's going to start retaliating. So immediately... So immediately, the diamonds tell Steven and Co. that they need to leave ASAP, with Steve, with Connie even admitting that they'll have to find another way of fixing all the gems. As such, as such, with the with the, with the diamonds in tow, Steven and Con, Steven and Connie with the with the crystal gems and with crystal gems in hand, manage to make their way back to Steven's well leg ship. And so they almost get there. It looks like they're about to make a clean getaway, but before Steven can get on board the ship, a little white bubble pay up, just pops up from the ground. And, a, and, a, and from it comes White Pearl, who meanly with this creepy little smile just tells Steven that he's not going anywhere. And to further exemplify this, White Diamond's giant robotic head that Steven got pulled into when he uh, Steven got pulled into in Legs from Here to Homeworld rises up from its spot on the rises up from its spot across the way, flies over to the legs, and attaches itself to them immediately. As it as immediately as once it's on there. It takes control of them before looking down at Steven, Steven and the Di Steven Connie and the diamonds. It's uh, so yeah, shit's about shit's getting even more real. As such, with everything going on, White Pearl tells everyone that they're be that what their actions are deplorable and that they need to go to their rooms, which I find hilarious. That's I, I love that. It's uh, uh, sorry, it's it, it just in hindsight is hindsight makes that line hilarious in my opinion, but. Basically, while well, Blue tries to be like qu clever and say, uh, "Which rooms specifically?" Specifically, it's clear that they are very much outclassed right now. They cannot actually fight these things. They cannot go toe to toe with this giant ass robot. So, what? How can they win? Well, 
help comes from an unexpected place, as we see two blips in the sky, as we see two ships flying down to Homeworld. Specifically, blue and yellow diamonds arm ships, now repaired. Clearly still having some patchwork done to them, but they but they're now fly up. But they're now, but they're now actually being, now they're actually being, now they actually have flight capabilities again. As they come in and start smacking aside the giant diamond robot. As such, which, which leads to an even better scene as, at first Steven thinks that yellow and blue are controlling them, but they're like clueless. But the two, but the two arms are just essentially getting into a, getting into a boxing match thing. As they proceed to just start punching out white diamond and not, punching out white diamond's giant robot before just knocking it out. It's actually kind of awesome. I dig it. Uh, but the question is raised, who's piloting the ships then? Well, the ships end up going in for a landing, and we see who the pilots are. As from Yellow Diamond's ship, arises Bismuth, decked out in her armor and ready to kick ass and, hit, and take names. And from Blue Diamond's ship, comes per Peridot and Lapis Lazuli, now both reformed, and both now with snazzy new outfits. And in the case of Peridot, she now has... I guess I want to say a superhero outfit. I'm not even kidding. It's clear that it, it's like she ha like she has a one like she has a onesie and I think tights. She has boots. She has a star on her chest now. It's I think it's the shirt is sleeveless and her visor now has these two points that just extend out from her that extend out from her head. So it looks more it looks more akin that she's act that she's tried to make herself look more like a a superhero than anything. Whereas Lapis. Her design actually is very fitting of her character, as rather than wearing a dress like her like she was wearing before, she is wearing essentially a ninja outfit. As she's as she has a shirt, some ba ba baggy pants that are held on with held on with a string, and wearing sandals. So yeah, yeah, they got some new looks. And since they're new forms, I should I should give my thoughts on them. I think they look fine, I guess. When it comes to Peridot, I think I admit I preferred her original form over this one, as I feel that one was more compact and kind of made more sense for Peridot's character, even when she was with the good guys. But I don't hate her superhero design either, and I feel like it's actually, I feel like it's it makes sense considering Peridot's kind of arrogant attitude and how it's clear that she's still kind of a massive dork on Earth. So I kind of so that does make sense for Labus's design. I admit that. <clears throat> Well, there is a part of me that's a little biased for her original dress design. I do like the ninja outfit too, as it actually feels very sleek and very fitting of her character in the of her character in the show. And considering how far she's come and how she's been able to essentially weaponize all of her past traumas and use it as a fuel source rather than something that controls her, I dig it. It works. I think it works, and what I even like is that when she comes out of the ship, she admits how fun it was just to knock out the just to knock out yellow or white diamonds ro giant robot like that. So that's fun. As such, the other crystal as such the other crystal gems come out, and they talk about how, and we get a nice little quick joke as they talk about how they repaired the ship ships before the thumb on yellow diamonds arm falls off. But it turns out that white diamonds not exactly down for the count. As well as White Pearl immediately talks about how she, oh, she's glad that everyone's having fun, but right now, but White Diamond, ha White Diamond will need to talk to them about their deplorable behavior. As White Pearl immediately gets in case of the bubble and flies back to the giant robot, with the robot getting right back up and ready to do more. As such, Yellow Diamond tells Steven to get on her, to just take her arm ship and go back to Earth. That they'll deal with this right now. But Steven ain't backing down. He is not running away right now. What? Yeah, he's not running away. He came here to talk to Yellow Diamond and talk to her is what she'll do. As such, the other diamonds decide that they're going to give aid to Steven as they decide to use their own con connections with their with their arm ships and they take control of them themselves, raising them up and charging them right at what at the at White Diamond's giant robot. As such, they end up flying around, and while White tries to knock them out, knock them around as best as she, can, knock them away from her as best as she can, it's clearly a losing battle as they manage to outmaneuver her. And even the Yellow and Blue ask for Steven's aid as they tell him to take a knee, and so Steven is able to use this connection to his ship as he literally takes a knee, and it causes the and it causes the pain, and it causes the leg ship to literally just take a knee as well. As it, it secures the diamond, the, the diamond robot in place enough. So that the yellow, so that the blue, so that blue diamond's able to get her arm on one side of the robot, and yellow is able to get her arm on the other side, essentially creating what I'm gonna dub the Diamond Megazord. Why? Because I think that name is awesome. And if you try and tell me that's not what it's called, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I do not give a shit. I'm calling it the Diamond Megazord. So that, and that's exactly what I'm going at. And if you try, and I'm not changing my mind. That's all. 
But even way, yes, with the Diamond Megazord completed, Blue and, able, Blue and Yellow are able to use their connections to actually get their to get their arms out. So that's so that Steven, Connie, so that Steven, Connie, Blue, and Yellow are able to get out, are able to climb aboard. And once and once the, and once they're brought up to White's head, well, essentially Steven encourages Yellow and Blue to just outright talk with White. Something that the Diamonds weren't exactly eager to do before, because well. The, because, well, the thing is, White Diamond is very much a perfectionist. And part of the reason why the Empire is as perfect as she is, is because it runs by her clock. So if they try and talk to her about their grievances, well, that essentially would be like admitting that there's something wrong. And considering that this whole Empire is supposed to be perfect already, it doesn't seem like something that White would be all for. But either way, Steven manages to encourage the Diamonds to speak up, and while they are nervous to do it, they do eventually they do eventually talk to White directly. As Yellow talks about how, yeah, this is not the the, the situation they have going for them is not healthy. Basically, while Ye basically Yellow talks about how she did everything she could to live up to the, to live up to her impossible standards. She conquered wor hundreds upon hundreds of worlds for her, but with everything that she had done, but with everything that they have been going that had been going on, essentially. It feels like it feels like all basically having all this pressure applied to her. It's enough to make anyone break, even a diamond. Hold on one second. Apologies, I wanted to look something up. But either way, yeah, Blue immediately kind of brings up her own defense and talks about how all the times they had with Pink, about how the diamonds used to be close and how Pink used to do all these silly things for them just because she wanted to make the other diamonds happy. But they aren't happy, and they haven't been happy for a while. And as a result, Blue talks about how if the if what they're doing right now is actually making things is making everyone unhappy. She finds it harder and harder to enforce these rules. As such, Steven kind of closes the argument, saying that they can change, that they can help everyone. They can change everything. They can start with yellow and blue right here, and they and all they have to do all they have to do is is get White Diamond's help. At which point, White Diamond ha readily agrees. As we see two, as we see the, the the eyes of her robot start lighting up, and blasting yellow and blue Diamond directly in their gems. And well, remember when we when we realized earlier that White Pearl originally was Pink Diamond's pearl, and how she was originally pink instead of that instead of this white thing? Well, we finally get to see how exact how, how how she went from pink to white. As it turns out, White Diamond herself has her own unique power. She can play puppet master with other gems. And yes, that is as fucked up as it sounds, as immediately white and yellow, yellow and blue diamonds gems start dulling and they lose all their color, just turning gray and immediately the rest of their forms start reverting as well, just spreading out over their bodies as both yellow and blue are in very clear pain, at which point once their colors are completely drained from them, they just kind of fall limp. Before their bodies start twisting and, and converting until eventually they stand up like this, much like White Pearl, complete with them having their own versions of her fucking creepy ass smile. And even with even ending with a pair of them going in their own white bubble and going into White Diamond's head. It's Yes! It's fucked up. It is exceedingly fucked up. And well, with white and blue taken care of. White Di or with yellow and blue. Sorry, I think I keep getting. I I know I keep getting white and yellow's names mixed up. I'm sorry, but either way, with yellow and blue taken care of, White Diamond decides to drop everybody. As she immediately, as immediately she just drop. Immediately she just kind of lets her hands go, and uh, immediately Stephen Connie and Stephen Connie Bismuth the Peridot and Lapis are just dropped. Thankfully, with the aid of some flyers, or er, thankfully, uh, uh, thankfully those that can fly are able to grab. Are able to grab everyone else that can't, or that like Lapis grabs Bismuth and Paradox grabs Connie, but Steven is still falling, and as he fall as he falls, he loses his grip on the gems of the of the of the OG crystal gems. As such, he tries catching up with them as best as he can, and even manages to get on get onto a rail, grinding on it with his shield. But he but ultimately, even when he manages to catch, hold on one second. Sorry, was sorry, was getting a phone call. But either way, even when Steven manages to catch up with the crystal gems, all he, he even only he manages to do is grab Amethyst gem, and all he and at this point all he does is just plead with Amethyst to come out that he needs her help that he can't he can't do this he need he he just wants her to come out, 
and he, as he holds Amethyst Gem close and starts crying, there's a bre there's a light that begins. Stephen and the Stephen and the gem start glowing as Amethyst Gem gets absorbed into him, and emer and from it emerges Smoky Quartz, which at first she seems all excited until she wonders, wait, what's going on again? At which point Smoky starts get getting up to speed and she realizes that. Steven actually managed to pull Amethyst out of her gem through fusion. So basically, that I mean, so basically, if Steven wants to wake up the other crystal gems, he needs to go and fuse with them. As such, immediately Smokey unfuses with Ste Smokey unfuses back into Amethyst and Steven, with Amethyst essentially chucking Steven over at Pearl. At which point, once Steven gets close, he holds he holds Pearl in his hand, says, come on, Pearl, dance with me, as he dances gracefully, and the two of them end up fusing as well. And well... This is actually where we get another fusion, which, yeah, this episode actually introduces us to three new fusions. The first is, well, Rainbow 2.0. So, we know that when Pearl and Rose slash Pink fused, they formed into the original Rainbow Quartz. Well, the thing is, while Steven is technically the same type of gem as Rose, he also isn't Rose. So, and considering infusions are meant to be a combination of gems' own distinct personality traits. So, the Rainbow Quartz we get here is very much a different Rainbow Quartz than, than the one we saw in Greg's music video. And, uh, as, just as he says, it's Rainbow, like I just said, it's Rainbow 2.0. And, who basically is, who basically, who basically, Rainbow 2.0's weapon is an umbrella, as Steven Shield became the upper part of the umbrella, with Pearl, with Pearl's spear becoming the shaft of it. And, basically, he's a nanny. Like basically, he's Mary Pop. Basically, he's just a more magic. He's just a more magical Mary Poppins. And yes, I am saying he as Rainbow 2.0 is one of the few gem fusions at slash gems at all that uses he him pronouns. So that's interesting. But either way, Ray. Which, but yeah, basically, immediately Rainbow 2.0, basically, yeah, Rainbow 2.0 ingratiates gratiates you to him right away, as he's immediately charming, fun, funny, witty, colorful, just full of energy, it's very clearly, yeah, at the same time, also meant to be responsible. Basically, it feels like a perfect fusion between Steven and Pearl, but there's still the matter of, of Garnet, as we see Gar as we see Ruby and Sapphire's gems still falling, at which point, at which point Rainbow, Rainbow 2.0 says, well, that won't do it all. Before before Rainbow 2.0 ends up ends up closing his umbrella, turns it around and rides it like a fucking and rides it like a fucking broomstick with a rainbow trail flying after him. But either way, he manages to grab the ruby and sapphire's gems before they hit the ground, and so Rainbow 2.0 is able to land safely. And once all the danger is passed, he ends up unfusing back into Steven and Pearl. And now we actually get to see and okay, I'll, I, which I'll, I mean, yeah. I might as well talk about the Crystal Gems' newest forms, because, yeah, with them being poofed, they now have new forms. And we and so far, and of course, at this point, we only, the only ones we've seen are Amethyst and Pearls. Amethyst's new form is actually pretty nice. It's very, actually pretty nice, very much fitting of her punk style, as her outfit is essentially a black sleeveless t-shirt with a rip in the chest so you can still see your gem, um, jean shorts with, with most of the legs ripped off, and, of course, her standard boots. And as for Pearl, well... Remember the outfit that she wore in the up she, that she wore in Last One Out of Beach City, where she wore a jacket and jeans. That's her new form. She's given herself a jacket and jeans, which I won't deny. It's actually kind of cool. I dig it. It's not I dig it. It's cool. Kind of fits of her. Kind of fit befitting of her mom personality, so to speak. Although she immediately kind of immediately she stops. So although immediately after she after Amethyst's comments are on the form, she quickly realizes that she and Steven fused, and she's excited for that. But there's still the matter of Garnet to worry about. So Steven realizes he needs to get her out as well, as, the, as they still need her help, and White Diamond is still there in the Diamond Megazord, and she is looming over them right now. So they need Garnet's help right... So they need Garnet's help immediately. As that Steven pulls Ruby and Sapphire's gems close to him, and of course, immediately he starts getting involved in light as the gems are absorbed into him, and they start fusing, transforming into a new... New gem, whose head starts spiking out. We see red and flames enveloping it. Before the group is crushed by White Diamond's by White Diamond's leg, or at the very least, that's what would have happened. But it turns out that before everyone can get crushed, Stephen and Garnet actually manage to fuse, and it's here that we see the newest fusion. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Sunstone. This hip 
cool, radical gem with flame, with who, a head that looks like it's made of fire, wearing sunglasses, has four arms, two big and burly, two that are small and skin, two that are skinny, and who basically, and who's basically that rad, cool friend that wants you to stand the up and up. I hate Sunstone. Yeah, I'm not even gonna hold that back. I fucking hate Sunstone. That's, I'm not gonna say there's anything objectively wrong with her as a character, because I can say with certainty that she is exactly what I think the writers wanted her to be. Basically, she's like one of those old, basically she's like one of those cool, radical characters that you would see in a PSA who tries to be hip and cool with the kids and tell them it's cool to follow the rules, listen to your parents, man, always, li always, always be a nice guy, all that jazz. And quite frankly, I hate those characters. I really do. Even as a kid, I thought they were dumb. And see, and basically, they always feel like they're talking down to the kids. And, the, and their attempts at being cool and hip to try and basically get with the younger crowd, it feels forced. And Sunstone feels like the epitome of that type of character. And as a result, I hate her. I just object. I just hate Sunstone. There's nothing objectively wrong with her. But I hate everything that she represents, and so by extension, I hate her. So there you go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You can probably hear that my voice is not exactly at the pro is the pro not exactly well. I'm dealing with a flu right now, so I'm, get I'm again I'm, I'm I'm mostly on the up and up. So I'm get so I'm healing and I'm doing better. But it, there's still some there are still some physical ramifications of it, and my voice is still recovering. But again, but that's my my physical health is not important right now for the vlog. Basically, basically the ma basically with Sunstone basically with with st with Sunstone here, the matter is still well White Diamond. She's still very much intent on not letting Steven and Co. leaving Homeworld, and she is not. And basically, from how she reacted when Bl when Blue and Yellow opened up to her, it looks like she doesn't exactly want to talk. Want to talk? So Sunstone says that they'll make her listen. They just gotta get into her head and get to and get and get and just to, and make her listen to them. At which point, as such, Sunstone grabs the uh, grabs gr grabs Amethyst and Pearl, and we see that her weapon is suction cup hands. Kind of a lame weapon in comparison to the others, but hey, take what you can get. As such, Sunstone tries climbing up the Diamond Megazord to get to White Diamond's head, and immediately gets swatted off by immediately gets swatted off by one of the by one of the by one of the robot's arms. Doesn't exactly go well. In fact, the, in, fact, the, in fact, she gets swatted off so hard that she unfuses back into Steven and Garnet. And it's here that we actually get to see Garnet's form, and it's fine it's what it's kind of it's it's kind of pink half red half blue in, in the chest and in with my only real complaint being her visor as the visor instead of just being this the simple one that we've seen her that we've seen her have for the majority of the series it's now a star visor which i don't know i don't really care for that one it's kind of, i think that's a little over the top for me but whatever but either way, yeah, the, ge the ge Crystal Gems realize they're going to need at least a bit more firepower if they want to get up to White Diamond's head. So Steven says that maybe they need to all fuse together then. So which Garnet says, okay, fine. Then I think it's, then it's time we form Obsidian. So, yeah. Allow me to introduce you to probably the greatest fusion of the entire series. And that is no exaggeration. Basically... From this, Steven, Pearl, Amethyst, and Garnet all start dancing in sync. Each of them dancing to their own in their own distinct ways, but all still perfectly synchronized with one another. They all start getting closer and closer together until they all meet up in the center. All posing, all cl all climbing on top of each other until they form a perfect until they form a perfect human slash gem pyramid. And the four of them are enveloped in light. There are five gemstones intermingling in it until the light explodes out. We see the and as we as, as it goes on, we see we hear heavy perca we see heavy instruments playing going dun 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 as the light continues expanding higher and higher. We see arms writhing out from the sides as the thing starts gain, gaining tangible form. And so and and so as it comes up, and so as the light fades and we see it we see it form, we see a big poop of hair fall fall down this thing's back and light up in red and with red molten lava. And we see its face. And the face, guess what? Is a perfect match for the face of this of the Crystal Gems temple. Before immediately and before immediately its mouth opens up, 
And we see that like Alexandrite, this new fusion has another mouth, one full of rows of sharp teeth and whose entire jaw and whose entire jaw is filled with the same lava making it up with markings all across their body, all of them just as red and molten as the as the as the ones across their hair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is obsidian. And they are fucking awesome. I am not going to deny it. I freaking love Obsidian. This is ultimately, sadly, their only appearance in this or future Steven Universe projects. Well, with the exception of Unleash the Light, but even then they were just an ultimate move there. But, god fucking damn it, they make such a good impression! They don't speak a single word. They just roar. They feel they feel like, like raw, untamed fury, just immense power. Power and anger just all con all conjoined into this one massive gem form who is not who does not talk does not listen who does not talk does not try to rationalize she they speak through actions and their actions are you're going fucking down and immediately obsidian just starts clinging onto the legs of the diamond megazord as they just start climbing up more they start climbing higher and higher, growling and snarling the entire way up. And while White Diamond tries swatting them off, it does not do... She's not... They're not going down easily. And so, <clears throat> to try and keep White Diamond off of Obsidian, immediately the other crystal... Immediately, Peridot, Lapis, Lapis, Bismuth, and Connie decide they need to go inside and need to help out. Well, before they do, Bismuth decides to give Connie a bit of an edge. Because after all... Dur After all, during Garnet's wedding, Blue Diamond Shatter rolls a sword. Well, Bismuth thinks that maybe Connie deserves her own, as she as she as she gives Connie a new as she gives Connie a brand new sword. Basically, this one meant entirely for her. It's cool. As such, <clears throat> as such, Lapis. And such la with Lapis holding on to Bismuth and, and Peridot holding on to Connie, immediately the, f the quartet of, the, of B Team Jams just start flying up the side of the Diamond Megazord, cutting and slashing as much as they can, but even then, all that are is just a distraction at best, as, as White Diamond keeps trying to s swat them out of the sky, just going hither and thither trying to hit them, and each of them barely missing every once in a while, but sadly, one by one, each of them do get knocked down. As Lapis gets chucked into a building and drops Bismuth, Bismuth thankfully is spared from getting hurt. As as Peridot is able to use her me use her metallurgy powers to st to get to stop her from falling just when we're hitting the ground. And then likewise, La and, La and likewise in Peridot's distraction, she ends up getting swatted aside herself, causing her to drop Connie. Thankfully, Connie is safe from Obsidian, who manages to grab her, but. As Connie is ready to continue fighting off against White Diamond and the Diamond Megazord, well, Obsidian shows that they've got that kind of covered, as they immediately summon the weapons of all of the Crystal Gems before fusing them together into a hilt. A hilt that they plunge right into their monstrous mouth, and from it, we see a blade formed of pure lava and or magma. That is fucking awesome! I can't deny it! That is so fucking cool! Like, oh my god! It's so fucking cool! I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not even- I'm not criti- I'm not being critical right now! I'm just fanboying because of just how awesome this is! And it's such an awesome sword too, as immediately the Diamond Megazord tries grabbing an obsidian, and what do they do? They just use the sword to start slicing and dicing the giant robot arms! That is so awesome! <laughs> Tell me that's not awesome. She literally, like, they literally disarm the Diamond Megazord. At which point she continues. At which point the Obsidian climbs up further and further until they are literally right in White Diamond's face and roaring into her eye. Which point, she, which point the Diamond Megazord continues just wandering around until eventually, she, until eventually Obsidian's unfort, till unfortunately, sadly. Obsidian's re Obsidian's reign of destruction is brought to an end as White Diamond manages to smack her head right into the, into a building, which in turn essentially causes Obsidian to poof back into Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, and Steven. So, yeah, the reign was short, but they will never be forgotten.
But either way, Obsidian did her, essentially Obsidian did their job. So they they managed to get the crystal gems straight to White Diamond's go the get to straight to White Diamond's head. While Connie is still clinging to the side of the Diamond Megazord, Steven, Steven just tells her that they'll go in and Connie will meet them in, will meet them inside. As such, they all dive into the eye and they once again enter White Diamond's chamber. And uh, yeah, it's just as oppressive and just. <clears throat> Essentially, it just feels it feels just as cold and oppressive and devoid of life as it did when Steven was brought there in Lakes from Here to Homeworld. It's um really fucking creepy. Not made any better by the fact that surrounding White Diamond are the are the four are we are Yellow and Blue Diamond, both still under her thrall. Excuse me, one second. Sorry, I was further looking stuff up, but yeah. We, but yeah, this looks even. Yeah, if I can co I give another compliment to White Diamond as a villain here, this this whole this whole, whole confrontation is just fucking creepy and disturbing. As the thing is, every time like whenever White, whenever any one of White Diamond's I'm gonna say proxies have actually been talking, they've always been they've always had the same tone of voice as essentially a condescending mother just talking down to their child and we and, they, and that's been consistent throughout this entire thing the way she told the other diamonds to go to their rooms through through white pearl through saying that it, through saying this whole fight was a nice little game was a nice little game but white diamond will have has words for them basically it's like she's just chewing them out basically it's like chewing them out and it's all kind of and it all feels so cold and disturbing and creepy like white diamond exists in this entire like in this entire in this weird little bubble of a in this weird little bubble in this weird little sterile bubble and it just creates a sense of oppression and control it's disturbing as all hell hell made even worse by the fact that white diamond keeps up the same sickly sweet tone throughout everything that she says all with either for with all with either a forlorn expression or just a smile on the face of her proxies it's it's just it's fucking creepy i cannot deny it it's just fucking creepy and this scene is no exception to that rule as me as when steven at as when Steven confronts White Diamond about what she did to the other diamonds, she just begins talking about their natural flaws and impurities. How yellow is so strong, but is so weak when it comes to blue. Or how blue feels like she ne How blue seems to have no warmth and feels that she needs pink. But whereas White thinks that she doesn't need pink at all. She doesn't need her at all. But yet, pink is still a part of her. The part she tries to, to repress. That's, uh... That's creepy. It's just really fucking creepy. I'm not gonna. I can't even deny it. At which point, as she says this, the I'm this even asked Steven what's actually going on, which finally gets White Diamond to take notice of the crystal gems there, and so immediately she starts blasting them too. Yeah, she just immediately hits every one of the crystal gems one by one and starts turning them into her puppets as well. And yes, if if her taking control of the diamonds was creepy, this is even creepier and more fucked up because at least in the diamonds case, they were not exactly enemies anymore, but I wouldn't exactly call them friends either. So it was more, but at the same time, they were technically her, they were technically kin with her, they were technically kin with White Diamond, so whatever. But in the case of the Crystal Gems, these are Steven's friends. And immediately after they're absorbed, White Diamond starts exerting control over each of them, and they all just lose everything that makes them what they are. It's... Again, so fucking creepy to see them transform from their from their colorful, bright, and cheery selves to these to these quite literally whited out creatures who are who are only acting as proxies to White Diamond. It's just so fucking creepy seeing them all talk in sync with her voice, all posing the exact same way as her. All of them smiling so creepily. It's just so fucked up of course steven immediately demands that he let them go but white says that she made them perfect she's not gonna do that and besides yes she doesn't typically like to spread herself so thin but pink forced her hand she had no choice and after all she is meant to be perfect she's white diamond after all she's a reflection of all the light including steve including 
basically all gems are reflected onto her, including pink, which is where she refers to Steven. Hold on one second again. Sorry, again, I keep looking back at stuff in the episode. A lot happens, and so there are some things that I'm kind of missing, so I keep looking back up in the episode to see if I can remember specific stuff, because I know that other things happen in the episode, but I want to be sure I get it all down. But basically, basically, as basically, White Diamond starts by actually kind of t turning everything towards Steven, as he starts, as he thinks, that, as she accuses him of intentionally surrounding himself with flawed gems. Because, after all, even among the diamonds... Pink was the runt. Pink was the flaw. So maybe, just maybe, she surrounds herself with worse gems to make herself feel superior. Which Steven immediately denies, because even if that was true of his mom, which I don't think it was, but let's pre but for the sake of argument, let's say it was, Steven's not his mom. He's not going to just do the... <clears throat> Steven's not his mom, which just causes White Diamond to laugh and throw that back in his face. It's at this point, though, that Connie manages to re-enter the fray and immediately tries rushing to Steven's aid, but we also, but ultimately, that kind of goes a little bit, that kind of goes wrong, as White Diamond immediately sicks Pearl, the crystal gem Pearl, on, <clears throat> on Connie. And what makes this even creepier, again, to show how much of a puppet master White Diamond is, the crystal gems still clearly have access to all of their abilities and fighting prowess from before White Diamond took control of them. As when we see Connie fighting with, fighting it out with Pearl, her fighting style is clearly not White Diamond enacting her own fighting prowess. It's Pearl's. It's all of Pearl's fighting prowess. The dancing, the elegance, the way she uses her spear. It's clearly, that that's clearly still some of Pearl in there that White Diamond is exploiting. It's just that Pearl is the one not, you. it's just that White, Di it's just that the main pearl is not there anymore. It's, uh, again, really fucking creepy. And when Steven tries to go and give Connie aid, White Diamond has garnered an amethyst holder in place, and he, d and he can't exactly get free. Which ultimately ends with Connie getting her ass kicked by Pearl before Pearl grabs her, and basically all, basically all three crystal gems present Steven and Connie to White Diamond. So, uh, yeah, again, everything's kind of going wrong here. And again, sorry, I'm sorry I keep doing this. Sorry, I get, sorry, I keep looking up stuff specifically for this section of the episode because, well, a lot happens in this portion and White Diamond really likes to ramp up the villain speeches here. And all of the villain speeches are very twisted and diabolical, but they also contain important information, which is also where this, which is also kind of appropriate after she, after she manages to subdue Steven and Connie. Because basically she continues talking, she continues calling Steven out about how, yes, he continues surrounding himself with inferior gems, but now a human, even humans too. Basically, like, she, and she even brings up how basically she tried, basically she tried dulling her power. She became Rose Quartz and hid away. But then she took it a step further. She adopted a disguise so perfect that she herself even was fooled. She became Steven. Which Stephen at first denies immediately because he says no, he's not his mom at all. Which White says, well then how, don't you know things about her that you shouldn't know? Which yeah, it's referring to Stephen's dreams as he has as he's had memories of Pink Diamond. And the thing is, remember how in the last two dreams we saw White Diamond briefly appear looking down at Stephen? Yeah, I think she was spying on the kid and looking into his mind. So yeah, that's even more creepy, and it shows just how connected White is with each of the with each of the other gems. But yeah, Stephen tries denying it, saying no, that's just his normal empathic powers connecting to her, basic so to speak. But no, White Diamond claims that the real reason why that Stephen's doing this is because he is Pink Diamond, or at the very least, there's a part of him that's Pink Diamond, specifically his gem. Stephen is a shell. A fleshy human that Pink Diamond is hiding in. And White thinks it's time for Pink to come out. As she immediately picks Steven up off the ground and it exposes his belly button. And in a very creepy scene where we see White Diamond look just the most fucking batshit insane we've ever seen her. As her eyes are bugged out, we see this little, this twisted, sinister smile on her. She reaches for Steven's gem. Connie on standby watching, unable to do anything but scream and, and try and yell for Steven and yell for Steven to try and help him. But sadly, it's all for naught. As White Diamond grabs Steven's gem and pulls it out of him. From there, well, something interesting happens. 
Presumably, White Diamond dropped Steven after she pulled the gem out, as Connie as and even immediately freeing Connie. At which point, Connie ran over to Steven, ran over to Steven to check on him, and he's not doing so well. Without his gem, he's now weak. He can barely move, and but simply, he's dying. Like he's like, here's the thing, Steven. It may be part, maybe mostly human. But he's also a gem, and the gem parts of him, of his being, are just as important to who he is as the human parts of him. And so, essentially taking out the very source of his gem side, namely his gemstone, it's like removing a vital organ. And considering how intricately his gen how, considering how intricately genetics work, it's like she took a little. It's like she literally ripped Stephen in half. And as a result, Stephen's human side is slow is dying right there in the in the throne room. However, Steven's gem side, however, starts lighting up as the gemstone lights up in White Diamond's and White Diamond's fingers, at which point she lets it go and it starts and we see the form starting to change. First, the first it seems to assume the form of Pink Diamond before then going shifting to the form of Rose Quartz. Before finally settling on the form of a pink version of Steven. Who? And what I love about this scene is that the instant that after the the instant Steven's gem is plucked from his belly button, belly button, the, the the next scene is from two different perspectives. One half of the screen shows things from human Steven's point of view, how he's seeing everything. The other half of the screen, it's pink Steven's point of view. And once he reformed, his side of the screen was like before he reformed. Before he formed, his side of the screen was black. But then when he formed back, but when he started reforming, it was filled with light. And then when he actually gained a physical form, we started seeing things from his perspective. And we see that once he assumes the form of Steven, White and all of her puppets are shocked. As they, as they were, as White was expecting Pink Diamond. Not this. And so Pink Steven floats back to the ground and immediately he turns his attention to his human half. Who who is just who is very much weak, as such. Both Stevens immediately know they need to get back to the other. As Stevens, as one side, of, as the pink Steven is as, as pink Steven seems seems to be very sterile and emotionless, while human Steven is literally dying without his gem half. So they need to put everything back together as quickly as possible. However, White is still very much confused as to why Pink Diamond isn't here anymore, and so she immediately starts questioning Pink Steven, saying, "What's going on? Where's Pink Diamond? Answer me." To which Pink Steven says, she's gone. And when White Diamond, uh, White Diamond now angry, try, t tries getting him to reiterate that, he just screams, she's gone! And he screams so loud that the entirety of the room cr shakes, even causing a crack right down the middle and causing White Diamond herself to just falter in her position. As such, Pink Steven immediately starts walking towards his human half, and Connie, and Connie, realizing that Steven's too weak to crawl to his gem half, immediately picks him up and they and starts and she starts carrying him over. But however, White Diamond is still not happy that she didn't get Pink Diamond back, and so she immediately just says, "No, you're." It's like, "No, you, no, don't you take another step? Get back, like get back here." You have. It's like not enough. At which point, she tries blasting him with her rays, and Pink Steven just throws up a shield. She tries again and fails. At which point she just she gets even more pissed off. And she says, "Why are you doing this? All I want for you, all I want is for you to be yourself. And if you're not gonna do that, you're, if you're not gonna do that, then I'll do it for you." And she gets so pissed off that she has that not only does she shoot a laser blast at at Pink Steven, but all of the assorted gems she's controlling shoot laser blasts as well, and which, which causes Pink Steven to just throw up another shield and to just kind of knock this all off. He ends up causing a massive explosion of energy, which forces all of them, which ends up knocking, which ends up causing a kickback that affects every single one of White Diamond's thralls and White Diamond herself, causing her to actually fall to the ground. Steven Oliver asks his pink half to stop because he's hurting people, at which point that he does, and the and Connie continues, and so he continues walking over to Connie and human Steven, at which point once they meet in the middle of the throne room. Connie hands human Steven over to his to his gem half, and while White Diamond is still saying they need to stop this, stop it now, Steven is not listening. If anything, seeing his other half, it makes him happy, because of the, because this pro proves one very important thing. 
he was always himself. There was He was not Pink Diamond. He was not Rose Quartz. He was himself the entire time. At which point, Steven starts cry laughing as he hugs his pink, as he hugs his gem half, and his gem half shows the first sign of emotion at all as he smiles too, and they start laughing as he hugs his human half too. They start twirling around happily, happily dancing with each other. White Diamond's confused why they're laughing, and so they, and so as they continue embracing each other, White Diamond, who was lying right there as they were dancing, finally opens her eyes, and uh, and and ultimately, the two halves of Steven fuse back together into the original Steven universe who is just who with who is back to be who is back to 100% health and with tears in his eyes now back now completely healed his gem right back where it belongs as such as such as such Steven feels happy that he was essentially re that yeah th it was always him but there is one gem that's not happy about this revelation, White Diamond herself, who immediately just starts throwing a fucking temper tantrum as she starts banging her fists on the ground, saying, no, 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 this isn't right, this isn't at all, you're not a human, you're not a, th you're not this, you're Pink Diamond, you're a gem, be what you're supposed to be, stop it, why are you sucking like a child? To which Steven says, I am a child, what's your excuse? Which... I don't know that Steven's on a roll this episode, which that caught, which that hits White Diamond right. The, that hits Di White Diamond square. It, it hits White Diamond square in her perfect ideals, and she blushes. Like she meet, like her face immediately goes pink, and that starts having an effect on everything else. Her throne room stops looking very sterile, as it starts lighting up in pink light. Her, each of the gems that she's controlling begin blushing too. And on the outside, we see the, the white diamond section of the diamond megazord begin blushing as well. At which point, white diamond realizes, realize, sees them all going pink and realizes, wait, what's going on with them? Why is everything going on? Are they flawed? At which point she realizes, oh no, the flaw's coming from me! At which point she is so outraged by this, come on, Chindy, that she immediately just imme let's go, let's go of all of her thralls, just let, just immediately restoring them back to their proper selves. The crystal gems are back to normal. Yellow and blue diamond are restored back to normal. Even white pearl is reverted back into pink pearl, which, yeah, we'll get back to her in a later episode. But put simply, once she's free, Stephen goes up to her and just uh, and just kind of tells her welcome back as she try as she's trying to figure out what exactly is going on. In the meantime, Stephen reunites with the other crystal gem. Reunites with the other gem with the other gems. He's happy to see them. But as for White, she's a mess. She just is on the ground, just not trying to, just just completely embarrassed and flustered, not knowing what to do, which causes her to blush even more. At which point, sorry, Chindy jumped on the bed. At which point, when the other diamonds see her, they realize, oh shit, she's off color. She's off color. At which point, White Diamond realizes, oh no, I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. I'm supposed to be perfect. I'm supposed to have all the answers. What am I supposed to do? What am I? What, how can I? What can I even do? To which Steven goes up to her and says, why don't you just let everyone be themselves? Like, you know, if you let everyone be themselves, you can find that they'll actually... That they've, again, hold on. Again, apologies, but I want to make sure I don't butcher these lines, so I'm trying to so I'm trying to make sure I get them. But again, Steven just lets her... But again, Steven just assures her that, that let everyone be themselves, that, that no one has to be anything, just themselves. At which point, well, even she's like, I can't... Like I'm supposed to make everything better. I'm I'm I'm, I'm me. I'm I'm the I'm the high, I'm the patriarch of the diamonds. I'm supposed to be better. I'm supposed to make everything better. Which Stephen says that she could, but she have to leave her head, which I like. And that manages to essentially calm White Diamond down and bring her down from her essentially narcissistic god complex. Oh yeah. Also, the B team of the Crystal Gems enters the head, but they came in just as everything got resolved. So, yeah, that's a thing. But, yeah. White Diamond has essentially been talked down. And so with that with that goal achieved, Steven, the Crystal Gems, and the Diamonds all head back to Earth in the Diamond Megazord. And yes, I'm never going to stop calling it that. Sue me. But basically, as they arrive back on Earth, it turns out that Beach City's in the middle of a concert, with Sadie Killer and the Suspects being the frontliners. Uh, frontliners. And as Sadie is and as Sadie Killer and Co. are wrapping up a cover of Let Me Drive My Van Into Your Heart... Well, immediately the diamond Megazord lands on the beach, and Steven, the and Steven and the Ge Steven, the gems and the diamonds immediately depart from the ship, and Steven jumps out onto and Steven jumps out onto the beach to say hi to everyone, and he goes to and he goes to embrace his dad, which I like and I dig. But no sooner does that happen than another ship lands nearby, specifically 
Lars in the off colors as they land back on the ship and uh, as the, as their ship lands and as Lars and the as Lars and the off colors are getting ready to uh, are getting ready to go out go out into Earth and experience a new life free from the diamonds. The ship opens the doors the hat the the shutter the the hatch the hatch to the ship opens up and they see the diamonds looking down at them. At which point they start at which point they kind of at which point even they all freak out. Or more specifically, Paparacha freaks out and the rest of them react. But Steven is able to assure them that it's fine, everything's cool, at which point he introduces the off-colors to the diamonds and the diamonds to the off-colors. And it's clear there's some awkwardness there, as, yes, while the diamonds are now actively trying to be better people, you can't exactly undo thousands of years of... 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 of how... can't exactly... They've been like they've been they've been tyrannical jackasses for thousands of years. You can't exactly undo all of that in a day. So, <clears throat> but either way, but either way, but either way, either way, as either way, with the assurance that no one's gonna get hurt, the off colors do leave. But and I also get a nice little scene where Sadie and Ka and Lars do actually manage to well talk with one another and it's it's really sweet and nice as they both see how where how where where the other has come with sadie with sadie impressed that lars is essentially a space pirate with lars impressed that sadie's a rock star him apologizing because he thinks he crashed her show but Sadie says no steven beat you to it and even lars getting a chance to see lion as he realizes how connected they are which also leads to which also leads to the off colors but just going around and just petting lion which i find adorable but ultimately sadie decides but ultimately, even with all these weird alien shenanigans going on, everyone in Beach City just wants another song. I guess they're just numb to, the, to everything that's generated now. But it, which, at which point, Sadie decides to oblige, but she decides to let someone else sing this one. As she invites Steven onto the stage, and he sings his own version of We Are the Crystal Gems. This one essentially encompassing all the victories that he and the Crystal Gems have made in the series. And, from, and through this entire song... We get a montage of Steven and the Diamonds fixing everything. As Steven brings the di as Steven brings all Steven brings the Diamonds back to the back to back to Nephrite's ship where White Diamond is able to see corrupted gems in person, at which point he at which point well we don't actually get any dialogue. We are able, Steven is able to explain how they work and Blue Diamond is able to come up with a solution. If they can find a way to condense any of all their powers into one place, they could probably heal all the gems and it turns out there is a place where they can do that. You know, the Rose Quartz Fountain, which is supposed to be filled with all of her tears that can heal any gem. At which point, which point with that in mind, they all start, the Crystal Gems start grabbing as many corrupted gems as they can and bring them all to the fountain. All of them chucking them into the fountain. And so as Steven, di and as Steven dives in in his bathing suit, the all... White, yellow, and blue end up taking just each take a step into the, take a step into the fountain. All of them a little, cl clearly a little nervous, but... It does the trick. The combined powers of all four diamonds begin restoring the gems as the bubbles begin popping, and instead of instead of seeing corrupted monsters coming out, we see regular gems coming back. Hold on one second. Sorry, I was hearing something. But yeah, basically, yeah, a one by one, each of the mon each of the monsters begins reverting back into regular gems, which it's actually really nice. And it feels like a genuine victory because. Again, you gotta remember that these monsters, that these gems have been corrupted and turned into monsters for thousands of years. And so, and what I love is that when the crystal gems begin seeing them healing up and getting better, they are just teary-eyed and happy, especially since some of these gems are their friends. What I love is that when Bismuth sees her friend, sees, <clears throat> sees Biggs, we immediately, she just dives right into the fountain and gives Biggs a hug. When Nef, when... Since Nephrite is restored to her original form, Steven just swims over to her and she just looks so joyous and happy. And then Jasper gets restored and the instant she sees Steven, she goes on the offensive as she summons her helmet and plans to duke it out with the kid until she sees him surrounded by other gems. At which point she's clearly confused until she realizes the diamonds are right there and she quickly realizes she's missed a few things. Which, a little funny thing, I love that yellow diamond is just giving her the side giving her an angry side eye as, as if she's saying back off don't you dare touch that kid which i like but it also ends with amethyst swimming up to jasper say, to giving her a little supportive hey sis before jasper gets kind of embarrassed and ducks her and ducks most of her head under the water but with the gems restored the diamonds take go back to the diamond megazord ex just kind of just kind of depart just kind of depart taking the taking everything from the waist up back into space before waving giving steven the peace sign and flying off and thus, the long episode ends as Steven and the Crystal Gems all sit down on the beach. 
Steven's diamond ship just resting on the hill, resting on the hills, as Steven sits on the beach playing on his on his guitar, with the with the crystal gems coming and asking him when he's playing, and Steven and Steven relays the final song of the series, "Change Your Mind," which is a beautiful, cute song, which I think is a nice way of which I think is a nice way of affirming that ultimately, Steven, ultimately. Stephen, Stephen, all Stephen needed to do was believe in himself. I guess, I guess so. Okay, yeah, that was a long plot summary to the point where this is actually an over an hour long video already, and I haven't even gotten to my thoughts on the episode yet. But yeah, that was change your mind, and my thoughts on the on the my thoughts on the series finale of Stephen Universe. It's good. Is it great though? No, I'm not gonna say it's great. And uh, in fact, if I'm gonna be honest here, I think this episode is actually flawed to quite a, quite a bit. It's not enough to ruin it, but it does hamper the experience. Put simply, in many places, this episode feels rushed as a, it feels like it's tried jamming in way too much for the finale and i get why all of that was probably done as after all the as after all as i said cartoon network essentially essentially cut steven universe off at the neck after they did the after they did garnet's wedding so essentially if they had so basically they had to wrap up this series as quickly as possible and odds are to wrap it up they had to essentially breeze through a lot of stuff they wanted to do for the finale which in this case included steven talking to the diamonds Ste introducing the new fusions and even and and even eventually Steven confronting White Diamond and convincing her to go back to Earth. It feels like a lot of stuff, like, it feels like in that regard, there's a lot of stuff crammed into this episode that really makes it feel packed. And it really feels like that we should have had more time dedicated to all those things. And I feel like that's more, that, that, that it's not even, that it's even more, that... Nothing say nothing showcases that better than in two areas. The first is the diamonds and their redemption, and the, and the second is the ending of the episode. In the case of the diamonds, well, well, I'll get to my thoughts on why I like their turns. I will also admit that their turns themselves feel very rushed. Like they quickly change their tunes after Steven hits them with enough relevant evidence. Now, to be fair, now in the now in defense of the episode, it's clear the diamonds aren't like completely 100% on Steven's side here. They are still very much like they still have these older mindsets still ingrained in them, and they're not. And it's clear that while they're trying to change because they realize that the way they were thinking before is not. A good, was not good it's all at the same time it's hard to undo thousands it's hard to undo what, what's been set in stone for essentially thousands of years the diamonds are used to living and, and acting in certain ways to ruling in certain ways and as a result they're gonna still have some natural prejudice and biases and biases that they have to overcome and so the idea of them immediately just decide mainly just kind of going all on steven's side and realizing okay we're all in we're all in steven we understand we are the bad guys this whole time like no, I feel like that we could have had more. Like they should have had more convincing. When I first saw this episode, and immediately Yellow Diamond just broke. When I first, immediately Yellow Diamond broke down, I was like, "Oh come on, that was too quick." Even when Yellow and Blue had their final talk with White, I thought to myself, "This bitch is the ruler of all of Gemkind. She has subjugated a single pearl through her control and has stayed and has sequestered herself off in her head. And the one brief time that we got to meet her, she would not even she took control of her conversation with Steven and refused to even let him get a few and the, all Steven was able to do was get two and a half words out when talking to her. So, it feels like it wouldn't be so I just knew so it kind of felt like that everything was going to go wrong and to that episode's defense it did. It immediately went wrong as white as white diamond as white diamond solution for fixing everything was just to take control of all the people that Steven had corrupted, so to speak. But my point still stands. It feels like that that the diamonds the diamonds turns felt a little too easy. 
Now, again, now, like I said, they do showcase by the end of the episode that they're still a little uncomfortable with a certain uh, with with some of the things that Steven likes. Like when Steven introduced the diamonds of the off colors, they while they say hi, it's very clear a awkward hi. Like if sir, that if Steven wasn't there, they'd be scoffing at these thing at these people right now. But the only reason they're not is because one, they're actively trying to change, and two, Steven is a and two, Steve. And two, Steven's right there, and he's vouching for them. So they're giving them a chance. So, yeah. So, yeah, it feels rushed, in my opinion. And then, of course, you get to the ending of the episode. The ending... Let me put it this way. It feels like this episode should have had, like, an epilogue to it, so to speak. And I don't mean, like, the epilogue of Steven sitting on the beach playing a song. No, I mean, we should have had a follow-up to Steven... To Steven for, was to Steven and Diamonds for essentially uncorrupting all of these gems because that's the thing. There's still because here's the thing: these the corrupted gems have been a major thing that the Crystal Gems have been trying to fix for a long time now. Even in the course of the series, we've seen the emotional toll that being unable to fix these gems has had on the Crystal Gems themselves. When presented with the idea of fixing them, when Steven wanted to try and potentially fix one of them in the form of Centipedal. Even the Crystal Gems thought that this might not be very successful. This might not go the way you want it to. But but they only let they only let Steven do it because they thought because they thought well might as well give him a shot. And when he did and when he did kind of sort of heal Centipedal, it wasn't a full res restoration. So they were still like this is still not right. This still isn't good. But ultimately, so. Hell, even when bit hell, even going off a of business reaction when she first when she first saw Biggs get Biggs in her corrupted form, she had she was she looked like she was gonna she looked like she was gonna break down, but had to stay strong because she was in danger and she thought that and she thought that she knew who, who the who the enemy was that did all this. So again, this is a big deal. We and again, so how would the gems react to seeing all these people, seeing all these gems that they once considered friends, or in some cases enemies that ultimately they tried to free anyway? Which I feel like that we could at least get a follow up to that. Like maybe have a moment where they all, where everyone catches up with one another. Steven actually saying some words to the diamonds for, for saying some words to the diamonds, or seeing everyone, or seeing, or seeing everyone reacting to the off colors, or, or Lars catching up with people on Earth, maybe seeing his parents again. I feel like that we should have had more to the finale to the episode instead of just a quick montage accompanied by a song. It feels like they, it feels like that at that point they had essentially got they had reached the limit of what they could do in the episode, and they decided, okay, we gotta just rush through this finale as quickly as possible. So. I'm going to consider that a flaw. And to kind of go into lesser territory, the other examples of how rushed the episode feels also kind of is prevalent in other, in other aspects. Not just in how quickly the diamonds were restored, but also in how they start throwing out fusions one by one. As, we, as, we're, as we're quickly introduced to Rainbow 2.0, Sunstone, and of course, Obsidian. Which, while I love... Which, while I like all of those fusions, except Sunstone, I, the very... The very... The thing is... It really felt like they were just they had to cram them in because they knew the show is almost over. We at least need to showcase these other characters before we before we're almost through. So it still felt like the things were rushed as a result. And I hate to say it, that kind of affects the quality of the, quality of the episode. Which combining that with what other aspects of the episode of the story that were rushed, like with the diamonds and how quickly they were turned, so to speak, it makes it all it makes it feel like it doesn't feel, make everything feel as strong as it should it really does feel like a lesser it does really make the feel it really does start kind of dragging the episode down so to speak and as a result it does kind of make the whole affair not feel as good as it's supposed to be with that said though there is still a damn lot to love about change your mind and it all comes down to what they throw at you in the episode from having the to having blue and yellow diamond duking it out, blue defending Steven and yellow trying to maintain their order. That was a fucking awesome confrontation. From Steven's armor piercing questions as he makes the diamonds start realizing what they're doing is wrong, which I'll get to my I'll get to talking about their characters after when I talk about other stuff, but put simply those moments were legitimately good. As all it took for Steven to hit them hit them where it hurts was to essentially shove their flaws in their face or in some cases just shove pink diamond in their face, which I loved that. I thought it I thought it worked and it definitely was enough to make and it definitely was enough to I think make them start faltering a bit. So I so I dig that at least 
So I dig that. From having White Diamond as the fucking villain of the episode, which, yeah, I'm gonna say this right now. White Diamond was a great final boss for the show. She was creepy, just intimidating, and so commanding and oppressive and cold and calculating. It really, you really got a sense of just how icy this bitch truly was. The fact that she treated this whole conflict as if it was a game, as if all the resistances from all the other jams were just them acting out or playing a game, all while she keeps the sickly sweet tone with a smile on her face. It really gives the impression, it really just gives off this terrible, creepy impression of her and really gets, really establishes just how detached she is from all of this, that she really doesn't give a shit about anything because she's White Diamond. She's perfect. She'll resolve this quickly. And if anyone objects, well, then she has a way of fixing that too. It's again so. Cr it again makes it all. Cr it make, again makes it all more disturbing, especially when she starts employing her own unique powers with being able to control fucking gems. After all, as we saw with with her making cameos in Steven's dreams, she clearly has some kind of a connection to other gems in her hi in her hierarchy. As she as she was able to reach into Steven's mind while he was sleeping and was able. To peek into his dreams like that alone showcases that let alone showcases that she does have some kind of a connection to other gems but the fact that she's able to have a power that she's able to essentially completely wipe out any unique qualities of each of these gems in order to make them pure it makes it even more fucking disturbing and it made you like just seeing and we and the way we this the way they're taking control of is so just it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. When we see Yellow and Blue Diamond get zapped with her rays and seeing their whole, and seeing the color get drained right out of their bodies before they go limp and their and their limbs start twisting as the, as 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 White Diamond starts asser asserting her control over them and they start smiling the same creepy smile as her. It just is so off and disturbing and really just get and really just makes you and really just gives you the chills made even worse by what made even worse when steven and the gems do manage to make it into white's head as i mentioned before how a, how a key thing with homeworld is that it feels is that despite all the color it feels very sterile and cold well the inside of white's head is even more so as at least outside in the gem homeworld they had all those colors to distract you here there are no colors it's all bland white just just oppressive, icy. It really just feels uh, it fe the whole area feels unwelcoming, unpleasant. It feels like you're. It feels like that you're. It feels like that the instant you step into white into the head, white diamond is in control, which makes sense considering how controlling she naturally is, and her own and how she's able to quickly assert control over other gems. So, again. Again, she really works well, and the entire time she flexes her villain muscles in the episode, she really is. She really, she really knows how to make you knows how to make you shiver, especially with how she talks down to Steven, laughs in his face when he throws out the idea that he is not his mom, which she finds laughable. To even when to even when Connie comes in and she's able to expertly control Pearl to fight her off, which again that was even creepier too. And there is still some semblance of the original gem in there. It's just that their will is completely stripped away. It's a Again, so fucking disturbing, and I dig it. It works very well. Very well. And the fact that she was so willing to just rip Steven's gem right out of him and toss him aside just to get Pink Diamond back, it's its just fucked up. It's exceedingly fucked up, and I think it works in the benefit of the episode, and it works in the benefit of her being a villain. Of course, of course she has her own natural flaws, but we'll get to that when we get to that. I don't mean like in the sense that it's wrong, that there are something that are things wrong with her character. I mean just like natural character flaws that all characters tend to have. So I'll get to that when I get to my thoughts on the diamonds and each of their revelations, so to speak. But as a villain, I think White Diamond more than worked. And the and basically this entire episode from beginning to end, it felt like a thrill ride. Only really stopping when Steven and the, and the co managed to get into White Diamond's head. And even then, it still kind of kept everything action going because of how because because of Steven finally coming face to face with White Diamond and having this and having this law, having this debate with her, but before, but prior to that, the entire episode is just full of tense, just full of intense scenarios, just ten, just tense, just with a tense atmosphere 
thought just amazing action that when I saw it, I went, oh my god, this is awesome. Even rewatching it for the today's vlog, I thought it was so fucking cool. Seeing them all seeing them all duking it out, I thought, oh my god, this is so cool. My inner my inner little boy was once again squeeing in delight at seeing so much extra seeing so much extravagant violence and high action in places. Seeing the di seeing White Diamond create the Diamond Megazord from the individual ships of the diamonds. Seeing that seeing the original robot getting knocked out by what by yellow and blue's arms that are being piloted by Bismuth, Lapis, and Peridot. Seeing them, seeing white and blue take control of them in order to disorient the robot. Seeing Steven being able to fuse with all the other gems to to try and wake them up, including Cl which allowed us to see them. Which allowed us to see Rambo 2.0 and Sunstone. I'm seeing a fucking Obsidian who was just so fucking cool. Like the like, I'm not even lying. Obsidian was so awesome. Like the instant they showed up, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. I don't want this to ever stop. And sadly, it did. But it was so cool. I loved it so much. I'm seeing the Crystal Gems fighting along. Seeing, but see, no, to see the B team of the Crystal Gems supporting Obsidian and everything they can. To seeing Connie get her own sword bequeathed to her by Biz. I thought it was it was all so fucking cool there is so much in the episode that I just love and it all and I thought and ultimately having the fun and ultimately the end and ultimately while I did find the ending to be even more to be kind of more rushed than it needed to be I will say this there's still something to there's still something to it to see all these corrupted gems be restored into proper gems Seeing the emotional reactions that the gems have when seeing their their out their old allies and enemies being restored back to proper forms instead of being mindless monsters, it's actually beautiful. And what I like is that you can actually recognize some of the gems in there, like the Heaven and Earth Beetles from Opal's debut episode. They are they are little gems, and apparently they were a couple. I like that we see we see more Centipedal and her crew, with Centipedal's crew immediately jumping into the fountain, with Centipedal herself having to be coerced in with a bag of chaps, which when she's restored to Nephrite, the chaps are the the chap bag is still in her mouth, so that's kind of adorable. Which I kind of love the idea of Nephrite just now having an addiction to chaps, so I dig that. But but I will say this: that still feels like a great, and it may, and it really does. It feels like a great shift in the tone. It feels like a grand victory has been earned. That despite, yeah, yeah, that, yes. Well, this isn't how a victory would be achieved in other shows. This still feels like an earned victory because Steven and the Crystal Gems fought so hard to free all these other gems, restore them to what they are, and they had to go through hell and back to do it. They went straight into the lion's den, confronted them, confronted the big bad behind all this, and they changed their mind. They managed to get her on their side. It was a shaky alliance, yes, but they managed to convince her. And I love that. I do genuinely love that. Again, it still feels like it was a rushed conclusion because I still, because I never, because I won't deny it. I do think that the, the Diamond's turn was still rushed and needed more time to it. But at the very least, it still feels like the victory was earned. Which, speaking of the Diamonds, allow me to talk about them each individually. Specifically, Let's talk about their flaws. Here's the thing. The diamond, it was made clear in other episodes that while the diamonds were very much toxic personalities and were at the top of the food chain when it came to the gem hierarchy, well, they themselves are kind of stuck in a toxic in toxic relationships themselves. The most obvious one is Pink Diamond. As Pink was the one as Pink was, well, as Pink was the one that was that was always the mo the one that more that was more prone to act out, throw tantrums, and would get never typically get punished and thrown on timeout when things didn't go when things didn't go her way. But in the case of Blue, Yellow, and White, their characters I find to be the most intriguing. And when I like and that and again, while I will again not deny how quickly they were turned, what causes them to turn I think is rather unique. And in the case of Blue and Yellow. Those turns come from them learning how badly they, have, how badly their behaviors affected their relationship with Pink. In the case of Blue Diamond, what makes her finally realize how badly the society, how bad the society's standards are, is when she realizes that in attempting to get Pink to comply with them, she made her miserable. She made her cry. She punished her. She essentially made her. She emotionally manipulated her and made her feel like shit. And when white and when blue diamond is confronted with those facts, 
she re quickly realizes that she starts realizing why Pink wanted to leave. And when she realizes just how, and when she starts realizing just how badly this is all, how bad, when she starts, and when, that, when it all kind of fits, that's what starts making her realize that maybe this isn't, maybe this empire isn't as perfect as we thought it was, which I think works. And I like that it comes from her connection to Pink. Blue Diamond, after all, Blue Diamond spent thousands of years mourning Pink Diamond, even to the point where where now, when the series takes place, she's still crying about her, she still feels sad for her, and was even mourning the loss of Earth because it was Pink Diamond's colony, and she still wanted to hold on to something to remember her by. But then learning that the re... But then learning that she was probably a crucial part of why Pink left in the first place, that ultimately all her emotional abuse and all of the, and, and trying to enforce such heavy standards on Pink ultimately pushed her away to the point where Pink didn't want to have anything to do with her, that would hit hard, especially for someone like Blue, and especially in the case of Yellow. Because here's the thing, Yellow Diamond, while she tries putting off this, this strong, this strong commanding air, she also can be broken very easily, which makes sense. According in her own words, she did everything she could to live up to White Diamond's impossible standards. And as a result, if something went wrong, she would get the most upset. She would be the one that freaks out the most. She'd be the one that get the angriest. And that's because, well, she's supposed to be following her Diamond's orders. And she's supposed to be following them to the letter. And so if something is there that's, that starts breaking those rules, she starts immediately freaking out. Because this isn't what White Diamond wants. She has to do what White Diamond wants. She always has to do what White Diamond wants. But beneath that, str but, but, but beneath that strong exterior lies a soft heart, which I'm not. Which I know people are going to call me out on because I know, because call me out on. But hear me out. Hear me out. As we've established in previous episodes, Yellow Diamond was gr grieved Pink as well. It's just outwardly she tried to keep herself stalwart and strong. Inwardly, though, she was mourning too, made even worse by the fact that she blamed herself for what happened to Pink, since she was the one that signed off on Pink Diamond getting her own colony with Earth. And it was ultimately and it was ultimately that decision that led to Pink becoming Rose Quartz and then supposedly being shattered. So for thousands of years, Yellow had to deal with a lot of shit too. And so now, like with Blue, imagine hearing this, that in Blue's in Yellow's attempts to try and force everything to fit into this perfect mold, to try and shut it down, to try and smack it all into place, she wound up losing something that she cared about. And that hits even harder, because we already know that Yellow Diamond blamed herself for what happened to Pink. So imagine hearing from so imagine hearing it straight from the horse's mouth that ultimately her actions did cause Pink to, to cause her to lose Pink. She lost a connection to someone that she genuinely loved and cared about because she was trying to live up to an impossible standard and was willing to crush even the people that she cared about just to keep everything running. In a sense. That's horrible, and the and the and the me and the instant that that white that yellow realizes that you can see the guilt hits her like a truck, and I dig that. I think that works. And then there's White Diamond. In the case of White Diamond, it's clear that she doesn't harbor any guilt or what happened to Pink. In her mind, she's like, oh, all of this is just Pink's doing. This is all just a game. Game. She got it out of her system now. It's fine. She's back on Homeworld. Everything is as it should be now. She can fit right into her perfect little place. So, but, but, <clears throat> with what, White's biggest character flaw, though, is that she's supposed to be perfect. And with that ideal for perfection in mind, she's kind of a narcissist. Because after all, she's White Diamond. She's supposed to be the creme de la creme of all the gems. Diamonds and regular, even the diamonds are supposed to look up to her. She's supposed to be perfect. Everything that she is is supposed to be perfect. Everything all is supposed to all fit into her grand design and everything. And basically, if something goes wrong, she can all, she can all fix, she can fix it. Which, that actually makes me wonder where the diamonds came from, but I'm going to get into my thoughts on that when we're done with Steven Universe Future. But my point is this. White Diamond all had essentially this narcissistic god complex, thinking that she always knew best. That she that basically, if it was her idea, of course it was correct. Of course it was right. She thought of it. She's White Diamond. If so, if there, if no, she has no flaws. She's objectively perfect. All other gems' lights are refracted through her. She is amazing. And if any of the other gems have doubts, she can just 
fix them right up. With a, fix them right up. Just get rid of all that blemish and make them part of her. It's, again, like, in that mindset, she's very much... Which clearly, made, which kind of going off of that, it's clear that someone that, that coming with that mindset and having all of her power, not many people have said no to her. Because after all, her word is law. It is supposed to be followed straight to the letter. You need to listen to her because she is the one in charge. And then enter Steven Universe. Like with all the other diamonds, she assumes that Steven is just Pink Diamond in another form. And she continues acting on that form. Even when, well, she accepts that the human body that Steven's gem is in is not Pink, she does think that Pink is still in there. And that all she needs to do to bring her back is just to take the gem out of Steven and then let Pink reform on her own. So, which, yeah, it's still exceedingly fucked up. But then when she actually tries that, She's met with some. She's met with the first thing she was ever wrong about. Which okay, she was wrong about a lot of other stuff. But this is the first time that she was thrown. The evidence was thrown right in her face that she was wrong. And she has. You can tell just how hard this is hitting her that she's that that that's, that's, that she was wrong about something because again she's white diamond. She's supposed to know everything, and yet she was wrong about this. She she was wrong about this. Even when she says, where's Pink Diamond? And Pink Steven just tells her she's gone. She refuses to accept it. So the point where she tries forcing her views onto this because, again, she has to be right. She has to have everything go her way. But then to be further proven that ultimately Steven wasn't a shell, that that gem was his, and that Pink Diamond and Ro Pink Diamond slash Rose Quartz is just gone, it hurts. It breaks her. It breaks her because immediately, because it's not the grief of losing Pink that hits her here. It's realizing that she's wrong. It's realizing that 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 she was finally wrong about something. And again, you could argue that she could be feeling some grief over losing Pink. That while she says, "Oh, I don't need you," there was a part of her that did genuinely care about Pink, and that part of this whole attitude could be her projecting. But I genuinely like to believe. But the thing is, again. Going on in the mindset of no one has ever said no to her before, being finally presented proof that she was actually wrong about something finally breaks the illusion and makes her realize she isn't perfect. She is flawed. And when she starts throwing a tantrum over the fact that she is wrong about something with Steve... Uh, with Steven with Steven outright proving that he's not Pink Diamond, she just finally yells out, Stop acting like a child! To which Steven says, I am a child. What's your excuse? Which, I love that. And the fact that she gets flustered over it finally convinces her oh my god, I'm not perfect. And she has trouble comprehending that because, again, she's White Diamond. But the only problem is, that unlike before, where she could be in denial, the proof is right there on her face. She sees it right there. She knows it's coming from her. And she quickly realizes, and, so, and suddenly she loses all of her purpose. And she begins wondering, what can I do? What can anyone do? I'm supposed to be perfect, but I don't know what's going on anymore. And I like that. I like that. And it's her realizing that she was wrong about all this stuff that starts to make her realize maybe she does need to change. And maybe there are things that she could improve on. So I like that. I do like how they kind of hit at their hit right at the diamond's weak points to get them to their side. Again, I'm not gonna defend how quickly they were won over, but at the very least, I will admit I did like the points they hit to get them won over. I dig that. So I like that. But in ter but uh, but like a, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the episode that I like. Well, again, I do like that we get again. The, so I already talked about the fusions. I already talked about the action. I like the I like the tense moments. I like the armor piercing questions that Steven hits the diamonds with. I liked seeing Steven. I liked seeing Steven finally confront White Diamond. I, I think I might have already talked about the action. I liked seeing the new fusions, except Sunstone. I liked seeing the I liked seeing all the gems working together, working together to take White to try and go confront White Diamond. And I and while the ending I thought was rushed, it was still nice to see everyone to see all the corrupted gems restored. And yes, it was also nice to see Lars and the off colors finally return to Earth. That one felt cathartic. I'll openly admit. So I like that. I think that was very nice. And on the whole. While I will not say that Change Your Mind is perfect, it's not. It's flawed to hell and back. It's got story issues. It's got story and pacing issues that keep it that keep you from that do kind of hold it back in terms of quality. The bad guys feel like they get too they get redeemed too quickly. And while there is a lot of awesome stuff in there, it feels like they tried cramming way too much in the episode because well the series got canceled, so they had to try and wrap up as quickly as possible. And as a result, it really does feel lacking in certain areas. It doesn't make the episode. It doesn't make the 
the episode horrible, but it does hold it back. And as a result, it makes what and it makes an episode that should have been great, just good. It's a good finale, but not a great one. For what it is, I think you. I think if you're a Steven Universe fan, you will enjoy this. And I does feel like at least there was, and the victory does feel earned, especially with all with that what happened in all five of the previous seasons up to this point. It's just that the story could have been told a lot better and could have and really could and really did need more time to let it breathe. But again, I'm not gonna hold the I'm not gonna blame the crew universe for that little flaw because again, Cartoon Network got, gave the show the axe. So there you go. But. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Escapism, I thought was a, was like, was an was an eh filler, not horrible, but eh. And escape and change your mind. While a good episode and, and chock full of so much awesome stuff, both character wise and both character wise, action wise, and even with a good villain in the form of White Diamond, it felt like it could, it felt like it could have been a lot better in certain other areas. And as a result, what should have been a, what should have been a great episode is just a good episode. Which again, good is good, but could have been better. So, again, it's enjoyable. But, yeah, that's really all I have to say. That's the end of Steven Universe. Or at least, the original series. Yes, while the well, Steve, well, Steven Universe, the show, wound up getting the act, getting the axe, Ian J. Q., one of the co-creators of the show, did manage to talk to Cartoon Network and was able to negotiate a sort of extension to the series. I say sort of, because while the original Steven Universe show did not come, was was done was finished with a squid change your mind there is still more steven universe material to look at we include and as a result these vlogs are not yet over the steven universe retrospective still have a few more weeks left to them and so next time we meet either next week or the week after depending on my budget we are going to be venturing back when we next meet up with when we meet up when we next meet up with steven of the clan universe well we're going to see the we're going to see the results of steven convincing the diamonds to change their minds as we take a look at Steven Universe, the movie. So then, hope you have a good day, and take care.